guys, Dinosaur here. Today I have a video for you doing a uh, pretty cool, uh, I guess, tutorial slash unboxing. Um, this is specifically for the guys with leftover uh, hard drives. Specifically for me because I upgraded the hard drive on my laptop, and I did do uh, I did buy a bunch of hard drives for the desktop I built. But um, so this is for a leftover one that you can't really use. So for the ones you can't use, you have to do something with them. I mean, selling them is is okay. You can do that, but you're losing some money. So the way you can actually get the full benefit out of using them is to use a hard drive enclosure, so you can use them as an external hard drive. Now I already have one in silver that I already pre-assembled and and uh, tested, and it's working pretty nice. Um, this one is housing my 500 gigabyte hard drive from my laptop, and uh, it's working pretty nicely. Um, I love the fact that it supports multiple devices, so the cable itself supports tons of devices. Um, it's very high speed, uh, it's not that loud, and it's pretty nice for the price. Um, I know I rhymed, but uh, I, it's about like 20 bucks on Newegg. Uh, prices do fluctuate depending on where you go, but um, it's pretty cheap, uh, so thank you for sending it out to me, Nexstar. Um, it's actually a pretty nice product. So the whole thing about it is that it's a very simple to put together enclosure. It's for the people that don't really need to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, all you really need is just your hard drive. Um, open this thing up, uh, which takes very little effort. Screw it in, and then you're done. All you need to do is install their drivers, and it works really nicely. So the box itself is pretty small. Um, this is the eSATA version, or um, they do have a bunch of different versions. They have the uh, IDE one so uh depending on what you're using uh not eSATA but SATA depending on which hard drive you have that's the one you have to buy so for this one um I had to use the proper box um for the proper hard drive because if you if you order the wrong hard drive enclosure it will not support your hard drive which is probably going to be a pretty bad thing you're probably going to spend some money and then figure it out later and you'll probably have a hard time returning it so that's just a little heads up that you probably want to identify the type of your hard drive before you go out and order this so opening it up uh, pretty simple packaging um, the box is pretty self-explanatory little tab on the bottom right here I'm um, just going to pull that out and the first thing you notice is that it has a pretty nice leather case. Uh, the leather enclosure is always nice to see. Um, also, um, so I have a second one. I actually have three because I've built three of these and put them together. But uh, they all come with leather enclosures, which is really nice. So you can carry this very easily. So the black one itself is practically a fingerprint magnet. All of them are, except for the ones with the matte finish. But if you look at it into the light, it kind of has a nice look to it. Um, so it's really shiny black, and comparison to the uh, silver one, uh, the silver one is the SATA, the uh, black one is the uh, IDE, or I don't remember specifically, but uh, they're one of the, they're, they're both different types. So um, they all have that uh, silver bezel going across them, but essentially they're the same dimensions and the same hard drive enclosure altogether, just different colors and supporting different uh, hard drives. So you do get a screwdriver so that you can easily screw in uh, your hard drive so it stays put. You get a nice uh, USB uh, to mini USB cable. Um, you also get screws, uh, obviously uh, four screws, so don't lose one because they're only giving you the minimum amount required. Um, so that cable right there, which you see connected to the silver one, is um, allows you to split this between multiple devices, which is a pretty nice feature to have. And then you have your driver CD, which is pretty essential, uh, so you want everything to work properly. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to first uh, pull on these two tabs at the bottom. So when you pull on them, you can then slide off these doors. So the first door on the top is slid open, which reveals the uh, compartment where you put the SS, uh, where you put the hard drive. Now, this compartment is probably the most crucial one because you want to make sure everything is aligned. If you don't align it properly, it's not going to work. And I've had experiences with my other one where I didn't align it properly. Then I had to go through the whole ordeal of pushing out to the other end and taking it out. So it's not a nice process to mess it up on the first try. So you want to get it right on the first try. So uh, here is the back. Uh, back is where you just screw it in. If you push on the back, you'll pop out the front and allow you to take out the hard drive. So that's one thing you'll uh, be able to do. So putting in the hard drive is not too hard. All you got to do is just line up the ports and it's in. Um, it's probably not going to shake if you uh, if you don't screw it in, but just as a precaution, it's a good idea to screw it in. Um, 
these screws are pretty simple. So um, at first, I originally wasn't able to get this in because um, it just wouldn't it, it wouldn't line up. Uh, these holes would not line up. But then I had to do some uh, realignment, and it did work eventually. And now, if I shake it, it won't pop out, which is um, something that you probably want to make sure that happens because if you uh, don't do that properly, it's probably going to screw some stuff up. So uh, slide on the front panel, I guess you could call it, and you got to push on those two prongs and then it will slide back into place. You'll hear a click or a snap and then that means it's secured. So then slide on the other one. Um, they kind of make an, a, metal, a metal screeching sound when they uh, slide on, so it's kind of weird. Um, but same thing with this one, pull on those two prongs and that should snap into place and that's kind of how it's going to work essentially and uh, that's the hard drive itself so now you have the DVD you probably want to install this sometime around now so that everything works because the next step is obviously going to be loading all your content on it so after this you have this USB cable uh, this cable is really nice it's pretty lengthy actually um, only thing I have to say is the splitter part is actually really sharp uh, the part that is the uh, USB uh, splitter is extremely sharp to touch. I've cut myself numerous times on it. Uh, it's just, I don't even know why they make it that sharp. But the splitter is not too bad, and the USB is just USB 2.0. So it's just regular USB 2.0, and it's going to work uh, just exactly how USB 2.0 works. Same speed. An indication that uh, it's on uh, is, first of all, the LED, which I'll turn on right now. Uh, you flip that to the left and it's on. It has also letters there that tell you that it's on. Uh, but you can also feel the hard drive spinning if you have an HDD inside of the enclosure. If you have an SSD, not so much, but you will probably hear and feel the, S the HDD spinning if you're using it, writing anything onto it. You will most likely hear it spinning, which is a very good indicator that it's working. So overall, I give this a 9 out of 10 because it's really easy to install, extremely easy to use, and it's just makes a useless product originally a useless hard drive and it makes it very useful so with that guys i encourage you to go watch out uh watch out for my other computer builds doing a hackintosh pretty soon thumbs up this video and peace